It's time for Windows Weekly. Now, this is weird. I'm in Vegas for CES 2012. Paul stayed home in Boston. Mary Jo in New York. We're going to see if we can get a, a three-way going as we cover the latest from CES. Steve Ballmer's keynote. We've got Ultrabooks to talk about. The new Windows Phone 7. A little later on, we'll also take a look at the Lumia 900. It's all coming up. Windows Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 243, recorded January 10th, 2012, live from CES. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Carbonite Online Backup. Automatic, continuous, unlimited backup for your computer files for just $59 a year. Try it free at Carbonite.com. And don't forget to use the offer code WINDOWS to get two bonus months with purchase. And by Ford. Featuring voice-activated Sync App Link. Now you can control select smartphone apps with your voice. So you keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. Check it out in the 2012 Ford Fiesta and at Ford.com slash technology. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to Audible.com slash Windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, a very special Windows Weekly, because uh, I am not in Boston or New York City. I'm in Las Vegas, live from the Consumer Electronics Show. Mary Jo Foley is in uh, New York City. Uh, where she is gratefully avoiding the CES craziness. Hey, Mary Jo. Hey, Leo. Great to see you. And Paul Therod also here from Massachusetts. I'm surprised you were here last year, Paul. You didn't want to come, huh? Try to go to every other one, you know. And yeah, then I, I, I guess if I, if I had known Microsoft was going to bail, maybe I would have done things a little differently. Yeah. People, by the way, raved. Last night, uh, Steve Ballmer gave... The last keynote. Uh, it's like uh, the last Microsoft. one. <laughs> yeah, it is. Microsoft <laughs> has announced that it won't be back next year for the Consumer Electronics Show. Um, yep. And uh, so we thought it would be pretty important. We streamed it live. And uh, I am told you guys did. I couldn't watch it. I was on a plane. But I'm told you guys did a great job um, as the snarky kids in the back of the class. It was my finest hour, Leo. <laughs> so, it felt like uh, we were at the Rose Bowl parade narrating what was happening. And here comes the amazing 13-voice tweet choir. They are going, they're about to sing tweets. That was, that was uh, a strange. Make it, make it no. <laughs> um, it I, I have no that. idea what they were saying. I still have no idea what that was about. Hashtag. I thought they were going to like live sing actual tweets. Which would have been fairly interesting. Well, I thought that's what they were doing, wasn't it? I think they did. Oh, yeah. they did. But I don't know Although how they were we, getting them from, and how, did they have to, I, you know, this is me, but I'm sitting there watching, I'm thinking, did they have to memorize those tweets just a second ago backstage? How are they knowing what to sing? And I don't mean to be sacrilegious, but didn't every single one of them have, like, one of those priest collars on? They did. It was just, the, was I think a, it was just. Were they all priests? No, it's I think it said Las Vegas Mirage on See, them, I, though, didn't not, it? That's not, <laughs> I, 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 no, it's I, think it was, it I, I think it was a religious choir, but I, but I don't know. I'm pretty I, uh, sure one of them was the coach of the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, too. <laughs> was very, the whole thing was very strange. He did, he did look like that, didn't he? That's, uh, yeah. yeah, he did. <laughs> so, um, but that isn't, of course, the most important part. The most important part was that Ryan Seacrest <laughs> was on stage. Right. <laughs> it was nice to <laughs> focus in on that with a laser-like precision. Uh, precision. <laughs> I thought actually that was a good idea because it uh, it made it more relaxed. It gave Steve a chance to talk instead of, uh, you know, pranced around. Which night do you think was bigger for Ryan Seacrest, New Year's Eve or the Microsoft <laughs> keynote at CES? I think speaking to Steve Ballmer probably is much like speaking to Dick Clark. Um, they're probably <laughs> wow. a good training one. <laughs> no, that's not right. So there's uh, no recovery. <laughs> there is, a, there was a big announcement, and uh, you had you had predicted last week uh, that there would be a Connect for Windows, and indeed there is. Is it exactly what you thought uh, we would see? Um, I guess I 
I guess I didn't know what I thought it was going to look like. Um, and so when the picture came out, at first, at first there was a, uh, like a false alarm. Somebody from uh, Neo when took a picture of something. I'm like, is that it? And everyone's like, no, but it <laughs> looks exactly like the connect for the Xbox. I believe it's just the innards that are different yep. and the um, development kit, but it looks just like the connect. Which is, actually, which is actually too bad. They should have made, or and maybe they will, some sort of a mount for this thing so that it can mount on top of a monitor because isn't that how most people will or many people would typically use it or in front of the monitor I, tell you, I put my connect yeah. at the bottom of the tv i mean the big thing is it's 250 bucks same price as a consumer connect uh it's available february 1st but the big thing is you can be closer to it which we you said you would have to do because yeah Connect I've always wanted to, to get closer to the Connect, so this is going to be nice <laughs> for me. <laughs> Harry McCracken is joining us from the Technologizer uh, blog. Harry, great to have you. Welcome. Uh, did, did you go to the uh, Balmer keynote? The Balmer. Yeah, so you were actually in the room. So here's a guy who, had, who could smell it. <laughs> wow. <Whoa. laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the possibly final Balmer keynote, although they seem to be leaving the door open. Oh, are they? For future ones. Oh, interesting. They said they were taking a break. Though they're not never coming back. They're just taking a, It's not you, it's me. I'd like to take as, a break as I said and see last other night, It's like someone who died is taking a break with life. <laughs> <laughs> they're retiring. Yeah, I think, I think uh, Gary Shapiro wants it to not be the last one. I'm not so sure Microsoft doesn't he want it to He just doesn't understand they're not that into him. He'll, he'll get the message eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I was just doing a connect gesture. I don't know if you saw that. That's, saw that's that. the gesture. Is that the, the connect jazz hands gesture? That's going <laughs> to yes. be a new one I'm going I'm to popularize. We saw those last night a few times. <laughs> that's how, that's how I, I want to pause my TV with ja jazz hands. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> so the connect uh, for Windows is a new, is it, is it minority report? Is that the idea? Anything you have to say about the connect uh, for a desktop uh, computing, Harry? Are you, are you thrilled with you run out February 1st and pick one up? Well, I think it's potentially exciting. I mean, during the keynote, they made it sound like this is the next great era right. in computing, which it's not fair to be that, but it is cool. Do you think it's more, is the gesturing more important or the dictating? Because that's part of what Connect does is lets you talk to it. Well, we, we know the gesture is important just because on Connect on the Xbox, it matters a lot. And right. Voice kind of nobody cared much about until just recently. And uh, even though Siri is far from perfect, Siri has gotten everybody right. interested in, in voice stuff. Siri actually is, for me, underscored how frustrating dictation can be because at least half the time uh, when I dictate a long <laughs> paragraph to Siri, it just comes back and says, mm, no. It doesn't even say anything. It just doesn't do anything. Voice is definitely one of the stories out of CES because Samsung had a voice, a TVs. voice control TV. Yep. And I, I can't think of previous CES as much news involving voice input. So, uh, Paul, I, I'm sure this is not Mary Jo writing this. Ryan Seacrest as the epitome of Metro. It was uh, me. L oh, it was, was you! Her. Mary Jo, I'm getting bad at predicting. <laughs> Paul and I are becoming one. You are. You can't guess which one wrote it. <laughs> right. We're equally snarky now, so it's yeah, hard to tell. Uh, He's turned guess. you into another snarker. He has. So, um... But I thought that, I, you know, I haven't seen the whole thing. I've just watched clips. But it seemed like uh, that was a good way to kind of tone down Steve Ballmer and make him more human. I, just, I thought it did the opposite. When, when Ballmer does the keynote all by himself, he looks kind of subdued and unhappy. And, <laughs> Miserable. And I thought the, the fact that he was not entirely yeah. responsible for running the thing made him more Balmer-esque. Oh, and, dear. And to me, more engaging and entertaining. I like him better when he's a little crazy. Yeah, the crazy yeah, Ballmer. I agree with that. I mean, I, yeah, yeah. And actually, if anything, it... it gave you that juxtaposition of the two personality types. So every time Balmer said anything, he came off so much louder and bigger than Ryan Seacrest that it, it sort of further highlighted, you know, what that guy is like. I thought it was... People I, I always thought that think was okay. that at, at every Balmer event, he's always screaming and shouting. That's not true at all. He, he is usually rather subdued, and I'm not sure if he's entirely comfortable in that role usually. That's interesting. See, I, I, yeah, I've only seen the clips. You know, developers, developers, developers. Those two clips. And yeah. both of those, he was talking to developers and Microsoft employees. Yep. You're motivating salespeople, too. You, you, you act differently than if you're presenting a product to... Uh, yeah, the, talking to the press, I think, is, he's not quite part. as comfortable in, but right. he, he did seem comfortable yesterday. Maybe because he knew it was the last time he would be doing it. 
Here's the surprise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm comfortable. Right, like going in for the last chemotherapy <laughs> session or something. We're done with this. Excellent. <laughs> and, and I am out of here. <laughs> um, so uh, they didn't say anything new about Windows 8, did they? They kind of recapped stuff they'd shown before right. primarily. They talked about the, the Windows Store um, beta coming out in February. Uh, but I don't think there was any new news about Windows 8, nor, nor that did anybody expect that there would really be new news. Right. Paul, did, they, did he say anything about uh, the phone at all? Or? Yeah, but it, same thing with Windows 8. It was really just, just a, a recap. recap of, in fact, the, the, the sort of new information in that it was new of that day uh, around the HTC Titan 2, the Lumia 900, the LTE stuff that's happening on AT&T had all been previously announced earlier that day at separate press conferences. Right. Nokia, Nokia had its. By the way, we now know it's pronounced Nokia. Steve Ballmer has confirmed it's Nokia. She used to be pronouncing it yet a, a third way. I heard before. It was more, more like Nokia. No. Oh, dear. I'm I've, sure. I've always said Nokia. Uh, yeah, me too. I'm sure Elop has, has a call in to Steve and will explain. Um, I, I don't think Steve and Elop can say it. He's from Canada. Oh, Most people maybe that's probably the have the first accent for saying <laughs> that's Nokia. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Nokia. It's a Nokia fan. Um, I do like this. I'm, I'm playing with, I have the, in my hand, oh, there, there we go, the, uh, the HTC, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the HTC Titan 2. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't, can I take a picture? I'm going to take a picture because I, 16 megapixels. Have you played with this at all, anybody? No. Allow the camera yeah. to use your location. We have now, we have a product person. The camera adds a tag. Yes, allow, allow. All right. Um, I'll take a picture out here where there's lots of detail. Hey, you know what? I can't tell if it's better or not. Let me uh, let me give you the image. We'll zoom in on it. Yeah, here, zoom in on the image. Might be it. You know, I think it looks. I, I don't. I think 60 megapixels in a sensor of this size. Is pretty mean. <laughs> it's going to give you big pictures from a file size perspective. Once you get beyond about three to four megapixels, they, they don't inherently help and they can hurt in some cases. Right. You know, it's not like a full frame sensor in here. I don't know what the size of it is, probably an eighth of an inch. And the image processing software is, is at least as important as the sensor, if not right. more so. I don't see a lot of clarity there. This is the, this is the full size shot. So it's a numbers game. They're just saying 16 because it's twice as good as the other guys. And, you know, you, it's so crucial that the shutter work quickly because if, if, if you get bogged down like you do with a lot of phones, it's very hard to take Well, let me try that. I agree because it's one thing that both the uh, Nexus, the Galaxy Nexus, and the iPhone 4S do very well. They're very quick. One. No. Two. Three. It's about, if, at best, two a second. There's some save time going on. You can take sharper pictures by using autofocus. Oh, now that's new. Press the camera button. Is this new, Paul? Press the camera button halfway down and then take a picture. Oh, Leo, that's, that's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, my camera does that, but I haven't seen that in the phone before. Is, is, is that Windows a new feature? Always, is that always? Because oh, yes, on the iPhone, yes. you tap, yeah. and then it does it. Yeah. Okay. You can also so tap not, the screen to take a picture, I believe. Yeah. To, uh, oh, to take a picture. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, look at that. Not super fast. <laughs> Boy, this has been a great You're demo. You're supposed to be Thank testing Windows Phone. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I have the phone I have, uh, I like a lot, but actually the one I really, uh, it's a, it's a toss-up between this, which is really nice, uh, and, but I'm thinking that the Lumia 900, they also, uh, Nokia announced I that. The, uh, really. I think the Lumia is going to have the better camera. Better than 16 megapixels? It'll have a Zeiss lens. It'll probably be, it's eight, right? I think it's some a, some Nokia camera Nokia cameras phones Nokia. have have really nice cameras. Nokia I know is wrong. I'm just saying here. I, know, <laughs> I don't know what Steve said, but Nokia is definitely not Maybe right. It was Nokia. <laughs> Nokia. Palmer definitely said Nokia. Nokia. <laughs> Nokia. 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 I think maybe he did say Nokia. Nokia. Um, it's actually on an surface. eight eight, eight megapixel. Yep, on that one. I'm looking yep, at the spec list. I don't think yep. Surface got mentioned. It does widescreen shots, though, and it has a pretty decent uh, lens, I believe. Or the, the Nokia? Yeah, the Lumia 900. 
<laughs> Let's just say Lumia. We all agree on how to pronounce that. <laughs> um, Xbox, anything there? Did they talk about... You know what I'm really curious about? Did they talk about uh, uh, the Xbox TV stuff? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah Verizon, Leon, Ed, and Comcast. Verizon's uh, Fios, Fios. Uh, cable. Uh, they uh, they showed a demo of an interactive version of Sesame Street where you, you can throw stuff using the Kinect. Oh, that's cool. And Grover catches it in a box. Oh, that's cool. And it's not a CGI Grover. It's, 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 it's a puppet Grover. It's puppet Grover. How do we know? Well, it might have been the world's best uh, CGI, but, it, but, it, <laughs> but they claimed it was, it was real. It was pretty wow. neat. They call it interactive TV. Play, play the uh, intro to the keynote a little of that. I thought that was kind of fun. They had a like that a montage the of all the Oh, the, you mean the song theme. bit, the uh, the video? Yeah, the, the Pogo song? remix. It's a Pogo yeah. remix. Um, yeah, Fifteen song. years of Microsoft keynotes at, oh. in one. Do you uh, let me minutes. before I do that? Let me ask. Uh, do you do you have the capability of pulling up my uh, screen? All right, I will I will play it then here. It's on YouTube. You search for yep. Microsoft Pogo Remix. I don't know why. Only 65 people have looked at it so far. Maybe we can get those numbers up by playing a little bit right now on Windows Weekly. It's a, it's a Metro interface, and it's paused. Let me, uh, this is, you know, when, we, when you guys are on Skype, we don't have a lot of bandwidth, so I think I probably shouldn't be playing. Maybe I'll play it at a lower resolution, see if that's the better. We have six megabits that we're using for our our uh, stream up to you guys but uh, that's one connection yeah I can't get it to play come on uh, YouTube here we go 11 speeches from Bill 4 from Steve 8 count them <laughs> 8 celebrity guests oh, I'm sorry you know, we'll just, when we edit this, we'll just stick it right in there. Let's do it again one more time. Four attempts to play this video. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. That's nice. They're saying goodbye. What a tight coat. Are they going to show it at blue screen? Oh. Oh, it's frozen again. I apologize. Just like Windows 98. This is a band. Devices. Devices. All right, well, is anybody going to do anything, or should we just move on? <laughs> Conan. That was a good person to have on stage, I thought. I liked having Conan there. I'm starting to worry a little bit. I hope Bill's getting enough calcium in his diet. <laughs> Help me out here, guys. You know, you don't have to just sit there in silence, in appalled silence. You can speak. I'm actually going to go out and head back into the madness. So All right. Harry McCracken for the Technologizer. Any, any thoughts, know, last thoughts about... Uh, should we just move on? I don't know if you guys talked about Ultrabooks before I got here. But just I'm, briefly. I'm actually sort of excited about Ultrabooks because it's such a vaguely defined spec that it can be almost anything, and there's some nice machines. That What's your favorite right now? I, I, we've looked at the Lenovo uninspiring, the Toshiba uninspiring. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see the Vizio because I like brushed aluminum. Well, the, um, at the keynote yesterday, they were talking about the Dell, which is being announced today being exciting, so I would okay. keep an eye on the Dell. Okay. And the HP Envy looks nice, too, even though it, it's not even all that thin, but it's a nicely done machine. Can you trust a, a company that decided this year to get out of the PC business and then get back into it? And buy a PC from them? Do you think the, do you think people know that they announced they were not going to make them anymore? And will that hurt them? I'm not sure if normal people pay attention. Maybe to it's normal people don't know or care. Yeah. Harry, it's great to see you. Great to see you. Enjoy uh, CES, Harry I McCracken. Will. You too. From the Technologizer blog. Bye, guys. Bye bye. They did yes, something about Windows 7 Momentum, then they did the Windows 8 demo. And then when they went back to hardware, they talked about Windows 7 hardware. Windows 7 again. That was super I could, confusing. I was really I surprised by that. I mean, yes. I think it was okay for them to talk about the Ultrabook stuff, you know, the Windows 7 stuff, of course, but right. to not show Windows 8 stuff when all of their partners are at the show busy doing just that uh, was yeah. very strange to me. I was, I was very surprised by that.
I mean, the thing, and the other thing I would say about the keynote, and, and just to sort of keep it in perspective, because I, this is something you can see on Twitter. Everyone on Twitter is saying, oh my God, what a disaster this was. So boring. We already knew all this stuff. They didn't announce anything new, you know? As if we, as a collective group of people on Twitter, were somehow representative of the outside world, you know? I mean, I think as far as the whole world is concerned, Windows 8 is still something that's obviously is coming down the pike and it's still interesting. Windows Phone is something no one knows anything about. And then Xbox 360 is, of course, successful with consumers, so it's always good to talk about it. And I think, you know, from that perspective of you're going to see a 30-second clip about this on the news, Microsoft just yeah. talked about Windows 8, Windows Phone, Xbox 360. And, you know, frankly, that's what they should be talking about. Yeah, and that we can't always judge ourselves as the audience. Like, uh, we yeah, I mean, say this a lot because we've yeah. seen everything in that keynote because we go to every single Microsoft show, right? So Yeah, so we're jaded we, I, and... and Snarky, jaded, all those things. Well, it's, it's certainly jaded. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, but it's, we're disappointed for us, you know, because as enthusiasts right. of this stuff and, and uh, yeah. looking for, gleaning any little minute new thing, you know, uh, we're yep. looking for anything. And they didn't really throw us a bone last night. And I think that's no. uh, sort of personally upsetting. But the truth is, you know, for the wider world, I mean, they, they know what they're doing. No, I, I was thinking, Paul, one thing you brought up last night when we were talking that, um, I also talked about today in a post I did, you know, we, we were watching for like, what were they going to show Windows 8 on ARM wise, right? Like, did, were they going to show us anything more on Windows 8 on ARM that we didn't see already? And, you know, we, everybody was like, oh, did you see, was the desktop app there? Wasn't it there? And, and um, it seemed to have been there. And does it um, mean but, anything? Which is really the tricky right. bit because. I know. Yeah. You know, they never opened it. They never opened it on ARM. Well, even so if it opened, really I mean, in other know. words. Yeah. There could be a situation right now, you, you know, the way Windows is built is that they have different teams doing different bits. So that right. build that they had, which was probably specifically shot off the side of the, the trunk for this show, was based on the old code from the beta, uh, from the developer preview, it had a couple of additional features baked into it. it, may have nothing to do with what Windows 8 beta looks like or what the eventual final version will look like. So we, we try yeah. to, that's what I'm saying, you know, we try to glean these little bits of information, but the truth is, yeah, when you really think about it, we just don't have enough to say definitively anything, yeah. frankly. And I think that was and the we aim. Didn't, we so. didn't know what, which build were we seeing. We have no idea, right? Was it the interim, like the near beta, what people are calling the pre-beta? Well, the beta, I mean, the beta uh, what do you call it? The, you know, the beta era builds are going to have a different uh, looking desktop, you know, for one, or uh, rather yep. start screen. Um, mm hmm who knows? We, that's the thing. So they, yeah. they very specifically did that on purpose. They, you know, they had the uh, developer preview start screen on there uh, with mm -hmm. some additional features, you know, li like they did, by the way, in September, like you pointed out. I mean, right. Just you know, like they build, showed right? us semantic zoom in September, even though we didn't get it. So it's not like they yep. hurried up to add that so that they could demo it. Someone already had that mm -hmm. working. Uh, they had yep. just had never pointed it out to us. And TI, uh, Texas Instruments was showing, a couple of people pointed out, um, a Windows 8 on ARM at CES. And again, you you see the desktop app there, but mm. nobody was allowed to open it, right? So is, yeah. it, like, is that just, you know, there for show? I, is it really there? We don't know. I am sure they are very specifically telling these guys, look, here's what you can do. Here's what you can't do. And I, I you know, I don't know what the repercussions would be if that didn't happen, but... Hopefully, with all the you know the kids milling around and see, yeah, someone will get their hands on one of these things, and someone else yeah. will distract the guard while they <laughs> tap around. And, you know, run, they'll find something. Else. Well, that's, I mean, that's how this stuff happens, you know. So we'll we'll see. But yeah, based on that keynote event, they did a very good job, I think, of locking it down and preventing yeah. uh, onlookers from uh, gleaning anything from it. And again, I think that was their intent. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, and then I I also heard from a, a listener of Windows Weekly this morning who said he was watching. Um, I think he was watching a live blog or or a live cast of Qualcomm's press conference there. And he said he saw Windows 8 on ARM with no desktop app showing. <laughs> so, <laughs> which again, it's you like, know, oh, which, you know. I know it doesn't mean anything definitively, but it's interesting. Everybody's kind of still not able to figure out what should be a I'm very gonna, black I'm and gonna white. I'm going to look now. I mean, on the, let me see. On the, uh, can you do it? No, on the int, uh, let's see. Yeah, you can, Most you can unpin the desktop even from the developer preview. We're back at uh, CES at the show floor, and we have uh, Mark Peng here from Coupa, K-U-P-A Corporation. Hey, Mark, speak right into that microphone okay. there. 
Good to see you. Good to see you. Where's Koopa based? Uh, we are based out of uh, Germany, Frankfurt, Germany. Aha. Uh -huh. And we have an, our North America offices in Santa Monica, California. Have you been making tablets all along? We've been making it uh, for about two years now. Android based? Uh, Windows based. Windows based. Windows. We've been making Windows based tablets for two years now. This is our second product. Yeah. Um, and uh, we are very excited about the upcoming Windows 8. And uh, we want to show you guys what, what we have using Windows Preview. Great. Um, now, this product is already out. Uh, it's been running Windows 7 Professional. Um, but the, the, question, the, the most common question we got from our user is that we'll be able to run Windows right. 8. So we did a little test our own, and some of our buyer customers actually did that too. And that's what we kind of have for you guys today. Just to Steve demo. Ballmer said at this keynote last night, anything that can run Windows 7 should run Windows 8 just great. And that, I guess, includes uh, tablets. Right. Well, pro what we'll have you do is we've got a camera here. If you prop it yeah, right where that water was. You could you could keep it on the table. That's all right. Just oh, okay. move it over and uh, prop it up. We've got our camera operator here, and you can give us a little uh, demo of the tablet. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about the specs uh, of the tablet first. It's a little thick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, is it an ARM? It's not ARM. It's a it's, it's a Intel Intel CPU based. Yeah. Uh, it runs an Ultra CPU at 1.5 gigahertz. Okay. Uh, two gigabyte RAM, uh, and this one has a 128 gigabyte SSD in there. Wow. And, that's a big SSD for yep. a tablet. And yeah, it's a 10 hours battery life. That's very long for a Windows-based tablet. Did you notice 8 giving you the same or better battery life than Windows 7? It's about the same. I, I think they're still kind of optimizing the Yeah, this the, is the just core. the developer so, preview. So this, this is very yeah, early. You'll see, you see a little bit of uh, you know, hitches here right. and there, but it's it's pretty smooth. Well, give us a little demo. Show show Absolutely. the screen. Absolutely. You can see on that monitor over there what it's gonna so what it's looking like. So you'll, to that? You're doing to that camera, but if you want to see what oh, it looks okay. like, there you go. Now you can uh, see. There we go. So so this is the, the, the Windows, say, the Windows 7 That's five phone. The new Metro Android interface. Device. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, instead of what we normally would do to go for the start menu, if you want to run something, touch on the side, and you can see how menu pops up. And here, you know, instead of finding that application, you can actually click search, and you can either type in the name of oh, the application great. you need, or you can, you know, do what we normally Scroll do, just it, go right? through it. Yeah. Or, you know, instead of searching through app, you can also search the different things. Now here, they have built and memories. I, I assume that they will put have uh, pictures and videos in there where you become searchable, right. so you don't have to go through the you know your directories and find what you're looking for. Right. So this is the the search function really has been expanded for Windows 8. That's something that we, we missed uh, the the idea that you could click the start button and start typing the first few letters of your program and it would launch. Right. It was such a great feature in Windows 7. Right. So I'm glad to see they put that back in. Right, Windows and 7. I think I think that's that's what especially for touch where it, it is hard to navigate through some of the the start menus. And this is probably will save a lot of use, a lot of headache. By now, I notice up. you have a stylus. You don't have to use a stylus. It's you a touch screen. You don't have to stylus, it right. So, and another way that you can use Windows 8 is that if you want to switch to a different programs, instead of finding that, the icon, you can actually flip on the right side. Flip through like cards. So you'll kind of, yeah. yeah, kind of flip to the next yeah. one. Now, for users, you know. It's multi-touch, right? It is multi-touch. And How many users, points at a time? Uh, two points at a time. Two points at a time. Right, and plus the stylus. And when you use the stylus, you will override. Override the, the multi-touch. Is it so pressure sensitive or no? It's very special. It's pressure sensitive. It is pressure sensitive. Up to a thousand, a thousand to a thousand twenty-four level. Wow, that's great. So, and for users who are interesting to the to the the standard, excuse me, you know, desktop. This is your our our familiar Windows desktop. Right. And here I'm showing the the pressure sensitive. Sorry, that's. You, like a pen. you can see there how you, you can a different level mm -hmm. of darkness there you can go through it. So this 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 is artists will love this. It's like a Cintiq. I yeah. see you also have a thumb uh, recognition, so it's, uh, right. it's got some biometric security. It on does. It. Uh, it's not set up. We don't have the drivers for the Windows 8 yet, okay. so it's still in the process. Got but it. this is I think this is um, a must have for any tablet because you have your tablet with you all the time. Easy to lose. Easy to lose. <laughs> yes. But you also want to access your data quickly. You right. don't want to punch that right. password on the screen right. all the time. And this biometric will save you all the time and give you some uh, security. I'm impressed that you can get 10 hours out of an x86 processor. That's, yeah, that's amazing. And I agree. It's a, it's, a, it's a bit thicker than some of our competitors. But that's that's because we, we do think the battery power is very important. So it's a big user. battery. Yeah. Right. And we yeah. think you know the, one, of the, one of the ways to use tablets, you know, one way people use it is to use two hand. Right. And you can type it as right. a clicking. Right. 
Right. But the other way is you guys actually hold it like a book. That's very common. And then yeah. you just draw this way. Right. And with us, this is a lot more stable. Right. And you can you know you can use the different features of the of the the, the Windows um, tablet much easier. Be great for OneNote. Does it have a uh, fan? It has a fan in it. it looks it like does, this one does have. Then we could use a fan fan as a solution as well. That's possible. Okay. Right. That is possible. But we feel. With fan, it gives a, a much better performance. It's, and also, it's not as hot. Right. Yeah. Right. And so this is very cool. You can run it all day right. long. You'll right. feel, you know, in room temperature. What kind of ports do you have on there? SD card? I got card? two USB ports. USB? One mini HDMI. And this one is uh, 3G capable, too. So you can pop a SIM card in there. Uh -huh. It's unlocked, so you don't, you know. Wow, now that's cool. Korea. That's cool. Right. Um, you know, send the external microphone jack and the headphone jack. So you're selling these today for Windows 7. How much? Uh, for six nine nine for for classic that's with sixty four gigabyte and this is uh, the top top model Lux and it comes with a one hundred twenty eight gigabyte and three G and it's nine sixty nine. That's a good price. And uh, we don't know when Windows eight will be available, so you're we just we don't. So so uh, you know like but, no availability but, on the Windows eight version. At right. This point. A lot of our users wanted to know. They brought us to actually right. try Windows 8. So, so you know, here, here we are. We just want to show. Flip, just that. flip through Metro so we can just see the responsiveness uh, of it, uh, just to get a sense of. It, it feels pretty. It feels pretty snappy. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think I'm sure. You know, this is a preview version. Beta is coming out in February and. Right. It's it's gonna that be even will be faster. that right. will be much faster. That'll be big. Yep. Mark, thank you so much for coming by. Thank Koopa, you. K U P A. What's the website? Website is uh, K U P A W O I L D KoopaWorld.com. Very good. Thank you for coming by. I appreciate it. Thank you, Leo. Mark Ping from Koopa, and uh, there is a Windows 8. Well, it's a Windows 7 tablet running Windows 8, right? And running it nicely, running it very well. Uh, let's send it back to Paul and Mary Jo uh, with more. I know that uh, there's a lot more to talk about. Uh, they want to specifically, I think, talk a little bit about the Lumia the Titan, and the Samsung Mendel. Yes, yes we, we do. do. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we were just talking amongst ourselves here about um, the Lumia and all the good stuff they showed at the AT&T press conference around the Lumia. That actually looks like an awesome phone, the 900, with the front-facing camera and all that. Um, yeah, I, I, you know... <laughs> In sort of a hands-off first impression, I would right. say it looks like the current front runner uh, in the Windows Phone world. But I need to see it, you know. But I, I think the camera yep. looks strong. Obviously, it's LTE, which is great. Uh, it's on AT and T, which is fine for me. Um, yep. I think it's 16 gigs uh, probably of non-expandable storage, which you know some people are going to have an issue with. But um, yep. yeah, that one looks good. Truth is, if you've got a uh, a tablet or a mobile device. Carbonite's great because you can log into your Carbonite account from your desktop, and there's all your data. So it's cloud storage in addition to backup. $59 for all the data on your internal drive. They also have external drive packages and uh, business packages that are multiple computers. It's all there at Carbonite.com. Do use the offer code Windows no matter which one you want to sign up for. You'll get two weeks free. And when you buy, two months extra free, 14 months for the price of 12. You've got to back it up to get it back. So do it right with Carbonite. So uh, we are going to go back to Mary Jo. We can't, unfortunately, due to uh, technical issues here uh, on the show floor, uh, have a kind of a conversation. I wish I could with Mary Jo and Paul. But they have lots more to talk about, including um, uh, these uh, new uh, phone devices. We just saw the uh, HTC Titan 2, which is sweet. Uh, I, I'm going to see a Lumia. I think there's a Lumia sitting in my... Uh, she won't let me hold it. I might be able to touch it, but we'll get a, we'll get a look at that Lumia in just a second and uh, and and more. So let's send it back to Mary Jo and Paul Theron. We hit on the Lumia 900 earlier. That one looks great, and then the HTC Titan 2 again. That was the one, I believe the code name was it Radiant or yeah, Radiant something like that. Yeah. So basically the same device as the original one. It doesn't have a removable battery, but it has a higher capacity battery, um, and it has a much better camera. And I guess we'll see. Whether that you know bears out, but so you know, uh, double the pixels anyway, double or rather double the megapixels. Uh, also LTE, so those I think those would be the the three big changes. And then you have a note about the phone that wasn't announced at CES. Yes, <laughs> the one that we've heard about called the Samsung Mendel code name. We haven't heard about that one yet, right? We don't. They didn't. I haven't heard a thing. I mean, uh, no. presumably a. LTE, LTE version phone. of the Samsung Flash, <laughs> uh, perhaps, yep. Focus, fl or Focus on AT &T, Flash. On AT&T. On AT&T. We know it's on AT&T. Yep. Uh, um, but no word. And also, 
the other thing we didn't hear a word on was um, the availability date. Nobody said, they said in a few months, you're going to see all these phones, right? But right. We, we have heard, um, Paul and I have heard that March 18th is the date for the Lumia 8, uh, 900 mm. at AT&T. So no and one's confirming actually, that. For me, it's also worth noting, I saw you had a post about the arrival of the 800 in the U.S., which is a surprise. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So that was interesting. I was combing back over the uh, Balmer keynote, which uh, which is in transcript form now, so you don't have to sit and rewatch the entire thing. And there's no um, choir just, in the transcript version. No choir. It just has no choir here. Um, but here's here's an interesting little sentence we didn't hear last night or didn't notice. It says the Nokia Lumia 800 will be available in the growing base of Microsoft physical stores unlocked in the next few months. So it's uh, already out like, unlocked in fries. Um, a couple of people have sent me uh, links okay, so that's to what, that. It's, a, uh, it's an unlocked version of the phone. Exactly. That's so a, probably you know, that's some interest. Yeah, going to be pricey though. I bet. Um, yeah, it's going to have to but, be a six hundred uh, yeah. dollar range. I bet. Yeah. 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 But that's still cool because some people wanted the eight hundred. Um, the nine hundred is the one with the front facing camera. The eight hundred doesn't have the front facing camera. Um, right, and and, and reports. I've not used one. Uh, much. I mean, I just, you know, basically got my hands on one very quickly at the launch last uh, fall there. But reports are that the camera isn't great, you know, that it's not one of the, yeah. the top uh, Windows phone cameras. So that's too bad. And also, I, apparently, depending on where you live, you may have trouble getting access uh, through AT&T because it only supports one of the uh, network types that AT&T uses here in the U.S. And um, some, you know, depending on where you are, that could be fine. And depending on where you are, that could be disastrous. So. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's probably one of the many reasons they're not uh, selling it normally, if you will. Right, right. Which raises um, a separate issue, by the way. Um, they never talked about the Microsoft stores. You know, they talked last no. year about how no. they were going to dramatically increase the number of these stores, which wouldn't be hard because there are maybe, what, seven of them or nine? And mm -hmm. there aren't any, well, there are only one or two here on the East Coast, certainly none near us. And uh, they had provided a map at some point. You might remember this, where they, they kind of said, "Look, this is where we're going to yeah. go," and it was it was like looking at AT and T's network coverage map. <laughs> you know, it was like everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah. And we haven't heard a thing yeah. since. And it seems like this yeah. would have been the ideal time to at least you know mention the store. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm betting the part of the big reason they're holding back on stores is probably connected with Windows eight again, right? Like they're going to have a big launch of stores when they finally have Windows eight tablets and PCs and Windows 8 phones. I mean, Windows Phone 8. I, just, I, I get nervous <laughs> at silence. You know, it's, it's one of the many reasons why yeah. uh, the silence around Windows 8 makes me nervous. The silence around Windows Phone makes me nervous. But in the case of Windows Phone, uh, when, I'm sorry, Windows Store, uh, the reason I'm nervous about it is it it, it doesn't suggest, but it, it, it is possible that the reason they're silent is because they've completely retracted those plans and are, are not going to do that now. And yeah. again, I don't, you know, I don't actually think that's it, though. I yeah. don't. Okay. No. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, the I'm one, a worst, worst case scenario type person, so. Yeah. The, the one they've got to put in, I, I mean, the one that is just such a obvious exclusion is New York, right? New York City. Yeah. Apple's like putting up stores left and right. Now we've got one in Grand Central, like right They're down like the Starbucks. street from me. It's, it's going to be, <laughs> it's only a matter of time before there will be an Apple store across the street from another Apple store. You know, yes. I mean, that's how fast these things are popping up. It's crazy. Yeah, I know. So, yeah. But oh, one, one more thing to say on Windows Phone that we were talking about also. Mm -hmm. um, so if you look at the specs for the Lumia 900, it lists as the operating system something called Mango Commercial Release 2, right. um, which is interesting because everyone's like, wow, what's that? So um, I went back and asked Microsoft and they said it is Mango plus the 8107 um, fix, which is the disappearing keyboard fix that everybody is up in arms over lately. Um, so <laughs> if you see anything it. that says that, <laughs> you must have it. Yeah, but you might not have it. We don't know if we're going right. to get it, right? That's that's a whole other can of worms around, you know, how is Microsoft going forward going to be disclosing um, w which phones get which updates and when? Yeah, yeah. That was the controversy du jour this week with Windows Phone. But, you know, the more I think right. about this, and I... I, I I think I'm gonna, an editorial I wrote about this will probably be out today, but it seems like all that's changed is that transparency bit. You know, that they're not really changing the way they do updates. They're just changing the way that they report them. And I think there's a, 
a bunch of reasons for that. And some of them are fairly, legit. I should say most of them are fairly legitimate in the sense that, you know, the ecosystem is getting more complex. There are more phones, there are more updates. I mean, you as a user in the United States do not hear about uh, the French version of a Windows 8 update, or oh, sorry, a Windows 7 update, uh, nor should you about the phone. And I think that maybe that is their point, you know, that uh, we'll let you know when you are getting one and you really shouldn't worry about it. You know, um, people who are involved with uh, technology tend to overthink things, I think, a little bit. And they want to be on top of this stuff. And why can't I have everything? Why I hear security, I get nervous. Apple gets all the updates, you know. Um, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I hear you and I, I get it. But I, I think really they're just trying to make it something that's not part of the conversation. And by doing so, they've made it the conversation. You know? Exactly. And, you know, yeah. I, I mean, the blog post that came out late Friday, right before CES, I mean, the other thing that it had in it that really set people off was, so we've given the 8107 disappearing keyboard fix to the carriers, and now it's up to them what they're going to do with it. And so <laughs> that, great those guys that, are. Whole, <laughs> that whole controversy yeah. started again, like, wait, yeah. the carriers can hold this back. Like I've, I've handed your baby to a serial killer. He'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so we don't know, not, you know, unless you start seeing the notification for it, we don't know if it's coming to our phones or not. Um, and Microsoft's not going to say, and I'm sure the carriers aren't going to say until it's time to finally get it or not get it. So, you know, I, I saw I saw a bunch of people tweeting, that's it. I, I want to have visibility into when my carrier gets it so that I can push back on them. Well, I don't know how much luck you guys have had pushing back on Verizon and uh, AT&T and T-Mobile. I haven't had a whole yeah, lot. It's like pushing back against gravity. <laughs> you know, good luck. Um, yeah. here's, a, here's a theory for you. And I, I literally just, this just flashed through my head, but we were talking about uh, Microsoft's kind of veil of silence around uh, Windows in, in particular. That seems to be their strategy. Um, do you see this uh, lack of transparency with, Windows, transparency with Windows Phone as maybe an attempt to move in that direction that maybe Windows Phone is starting to come under the uh, direction of Windows, and that as those guys look at what Windows Phone is doing, they're they're kind of saying, "Wait, you're not you're not really reporting what's happening with this stuff to people, are you?" I mean, you know, because when you do that, you kind you set up this situation where that that's what people expect, and maybe they're trying to back away from that a little bit and be a little bit more like Windows is. You know, I hadn't thought of that, so you just said it, and now you're giving me indigestion. And now you're never going to be able to get it out of your head. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. you know it, it's not the only division of Microsoft that's happening too, right? Like we're we're not hearing all the updates we used to about Windows Azure anymore either. I mean, the, so mm -hmm. the secrecy is starting to permeate more divisions at Microsoft, and so it's natural, I guess, to think it could come to phone as well and may. Um, you know, and and I as I rant every week, I feel like it, I don't mind when they don't talk about things they haven't announced because you know they want to have some big reveal and some element of secrecy versus their competitors. But for things they have started talking about, you know, like a disappearing keyboard fix or something like that, I don't think secrecy is the right way to go. Once I the cat's don't. out of the bag, I, it's I, out. I never think it is, but yep, I hear you. <laughs> so I guess we have to go back to the CES stage with Leo. Leo Laporte, Paul Thorat, Mary Jo Foley, Windows Weekly live from the Consumer Electronics Show 2012. And in just a moment, uh, I've got Sarah Giles here from Nokia, and she is going to show us. We've got it. The Lumia 710, you've already seen that one. That's T-Mobile's got that, but the new Lumia 900 from AT&T. Also, news about this Lumia 800 that you guys were uh, talking about in just a second. But before we do that, can I mention our good friends at Ford who are making our broadcasts possible today? Ford is here at the show big time. In fact, Alan Mulally, we're going to talk to him uh, this afternoon, the CEO of Ford, uh, about 3 o'clock live on our stream. We'll also be... Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to be having dinner with Alan and uh, finding out about the latest plans Ford has. At the Detroit Auto Show yesterday, they showed the new Fusion for 2013. What a sweet-looking car. They've got it here on the show floor. We're going to go over and take a look. Uh, but the neat thing about Ford, of course, and I've talked about it many times before, is the Ford Sync, the idea of keeping your hands on the wheel, your eyes on the road, but talking to your car to get it to do all sorts of things. The new Ford Sync with App Link, it's, you'll find it in the 2012 uh, Fiesta. So sweet. You, you press the button, and the Fiesta, the button is, um, uh, I think it's on, yeah, it's on the um, turn signal right here. You press the button. The, la the nice lady in the car goes, yes, what do you want? And you can say things like, run my Pandora app. The app is on your phone. It launches the app on your phone. 
You can say, play my classic rock station. It plays the station. You can give thumbs up, thumbs down to a song. You can say, hey, I like that song. Bookmark that. When I get home, I want to buy it. They also have Stitcher, Slacker. They have Open Beak, which will read your tweets to you, uh, your replies and your timeline. I, I just have to say, they are just doing an amazing thing. Alan told me last year, he said, we realized that applications in the phone are going to iterate faster than, they, than we could possibly in, uh, iterate your car. So by creating an API for Ford Sync to talk to the phone, it means that phone app developers can interface with the car in a very elegant, simple way. And we're going to see more and more apps uh, working with your Ford vehicles. I want you to take a look at the 2012 Ford Fiesta. They've got one at a dealer near you. Just drive one today or go to Ford.com slash technology uh, to learn more about all the amazing technology that's in these new Ford vehicles. App Link is available on uh, some models and, and of course you have to have a compatible smartphone, but you'll find out all about it at Ford.com slash technology. And we do thank Ford so much for uh, giving us the wherewithal to cover CES Live. Sarah Giles has uh, just joined us. She uh, is working for a Nokia and showing off some phones. I see the Lumia 710, which is a beautiful phone. That's yeah. that Now they've announced T-Mobile availability, right? That's right. So this is going to be available in stores tomorrow through T-Mobile. It's $49.99 on contract. Wow, very affordable. Great deal. We all know T-Mobile has great affordable plans as well. So if you're looking for a good smartphone option, this is it. But... <laughs> <laughs> Next to it is the phone right. that I've been waiting for. Right. Now, I've played with the Nokia N9, uh, which is just a beautiful, and this is exactly like it. The mm -hmm. same, uh, I just love the rounded edges on it. The hand feel is great. 4.3-inch um, uh, AMOLED screen, but this is running Windows Phone uh, 7, um, and I think it's just... Uh, this now where where's the on off switch? It's on the side right there. There it under is in the, the middle. Rocket. Yeah, there I see it go. right there. So I just want to give you a look at that screen. I'll slide this up. Just a gorgeous screen. The hand feels great. Eight megapixel camera in here. That's right. The rear camera is eight megapixels. Slide it. I it's our Carl Zeiss optics. Down. You're only going to get right. that on Nokia. And then right. we've also added the front facing camera on this device as well. So and Paul and Mary Jo were talking about this. There is a Lumia 800. That's basically the one that's sold in Europe without the front facing camera. Correct. Slightly smaller screen. Correct. And you've announced that that will also be available unlocked in the U.S. on at Micro that's and Microsoft right. stores. That's, that's right. pretty. That's uh, that's cool. So for people who want a phone that they can take to Europe with them, take the SIM card out, put in a European SIM card, that kind of thing, which is, I always have one phone. In fact, it's a, it's a Nokia phone that I always have for that. But this is going to be, I think, the Windows phone uh, that everybody wants to take a look at. If you've been, I mean, I hate to I hate to deprecate the Titan. We were just looking at the Titan 2. Very nice. All I can say is my, in my hand, this just, there's something about it. It just feels really, really uh, great. Dedicated camera buttons like uh, all the Windows uh, phone, 7 phone, 7.5, this is Mango. Um, so there it is. No price and availability yet? We, you Not yet. No You're going to have to stay tuned for that, yeah. but it will be exclusive with AT&T. And, and Sarah was very clear that I could only hold it for a minute. I would have to <laughs> give it back to you. Thank you, Sarah, for dropping uh, you by are with very that. Welcome. That is Thank a very nice me. phone. I really Glad appreciate it. Glad you like it. We like it, too. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> we'll send you back to uh, Paul and uh, Mary Jo as we continue with Windows Weekly and uh, our coverage of CES 2012. First thing I want to say is, uh, Sarah, call me. Because um, <laughs> I really want to see that phone. Yeah, so what do you think, yeah. Ultrabooks? Do we have time? I'm not sure how much time we have uh, today. I, I somehow think or for some reason think this is going to be a shorter show than usual. But if we had time, maybe we could go through the Ultrabook stuff. Yeah, we could try. I just want to say the words downward facing dog on Windows Weekly. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? No, <laughs> no I don't. You don't. Is this, a, you is don't this a reference to a yoga? Yoga. Okay. Yes, yo the yoga split, the Lenovo. Um, That's the one Ultrabook I want to see the. M well, it's one of the ones I want to see the most. So, Paul, yeah. a downward facing dog is like an upside down V in yoga. So, get it now, it like, like a, how like they can walk? bend the. <laughs> it's how they can bend that thing, like all different ways. You know, like it's like a the girl from The Exorcist thing. when she walked down the stairs, upside down. <laughs> I think you and I are on different planes. I'm talking yoga. You're talking <laughs> exorcist. <laughs> we're we're going to arrive okay. at the same place. Just take a different we are. Place. We're going to end up in the same place. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that looked pretty cool, actually. The the yeah. um, yoga split. I thought that looked cool. Twelve hundred bucks, eh, maybe. Okay. Did you so, get to hold uh, yeah, one think, or try one out? What's that? 
Did you get to try one out, hold it, or no? Not play yet. I had a, a, a pre-briefing with Lenovo, but it was you know uh, virtual, so no, not yet. And I'm going to go. I'm actually going to visit Lenovo uh, because I didn't go to the show because they've got so much stuff coming out, and that obviously is one of the big ones. But you know, pe some people have uh, misunderstood it. You know, a lot uh, the more cynical out there, and I know that's surprising on the internet have said, you know, this thing weighs like twice as much or three times as much as an iPad. Why would I want something like that, you know? And it's it's not meant to be an iPad competitor. It's a laptop that can sometimes mm -hmm. be used as a tablet, you know? And and it yeah. takes the, the notion of convertible tablets that we had, I mean, 10 years ago almost now, uh, back with the original tablet PC line. And it adds a, a twist, if you will. So it, it, it has that screen that can turn around and flip back and, um, you know, be placed back on the... Um, the top of the keyboard, so you have a kind of a thick slate type device, but it also works in that fashion that you were talking about, the yoga pose, uh, backwards modes, you know, the, it, as a stand, and you know, where it's in a, essentially an upside down V, like you said, and then also as uh, you kind of can flip it around and use it backwards, um, it, 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 even though it has two hinges, it can rotate 360 degrees, so it can go, you know, come around mm -hmm. uh, all the way, and uh, that, I yeah. think that's very oh, interesting. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it looked yeah. cool. So, I, and I, I think your point about this is, remember, this is a PC, not a tablet, right? And this right. is where Microsoft kind of trips over itself in a way because they keep saying tablets are PCs, right? And a three-pound oh. tablet is not a great tablet. Yeah, R right. I mean, but it's a it's good not, business but, tablet. But, right? but you know, the, the beauty of the PC industry, in the, in the same way that the, the, the PC model has its uh, deficiencies, certainly, you, you know, on the plus side, you have this range of choices and it's a diverse world and everyone has different needs. And some people are gonna want something that is a laptop first and foremost, but sometimes it can be a tablet. You know, mm -hmm. If what you're looking for is the lightest possible device that you can carry around in your bag and, or just in your hand and it weighs next to nothing, no, this is not gonna be the one you want. But the nice thing is in the PC world, you will have that choice as well. You know, We're gonna see traditional uh, if, well, traditional. The iPad's only two years old. We're going to see iPad-style slates that are very thin and light and hopefully get good battery life. Uh, but we're also going to see things that are full machines. You know, that, And this is more of a, a traditional laptop that has extra capabilities. And I think that's a cool one. Yeah. I mean, what I'm really dying to see, and I've been dying to see this since build, is, is an ARM tablet. I, yep. I just want to see, you know, okay, what are these things going to be like? How big Those are, are they going to be? How heavy? You know? And I mean, because I, I think about this year for me as like kind of an average consumer and I'm like, I want I want a new tablet this year. And I the thing I want to wait and see is Windows 8 on a tablet. So for me, these new form factors, Ultrabooks and Thin and Lights, they're cool. But I mm -hmm. really, really want to see Windows 8 on a tablet that's meant to be a true competitor to the iPad. And so that's, yeah. that's what I'm hoping when, you know, when this, when this beta build comes out at the end of February, as they stressed again last night, that's the timing. Um, I'm really hoping that by then we finally can see Windows 8 on ARM and see some slates and, and true tablets at that point. Yeah, I'd like to see some kind of transformer prime type ARM devices for mm -hmm. Windows 8 where... It is an iPad, essentially, when you're on a plane or sitting out of the couch, you know, kind of browsing the web while you're watching TV or whatever. But, you know, when it, com when, when it, uh, it comes down to it, you really need to get work done. You can clip a, la a laptop-style keyboard onto the bottom of that thing, and it, it is a Windows laptop. It's a real Windows machine. And, again, I think we are going to see that entire – I know we are. I mean, of course we are. That's the whole uh, – I think that's the whole point. Um, I guess we only have a couple of minutes for this segment. I just wanted to quickly throw out the notion of uh, Vizio entering the PC market. I think that mm. if you have not seen these devices, uh, you should look at them. They're beautiful uh, and Apple-esque, if you will. Very thin, uh, all-in-one PCs and also netbook, com uh, sorry, not netbook, uh, Ultrabook-type uh, computers. Um, some beautiful stuff. And if you're not familiar with Vizio, they're essentially one of the low-ball, uh, cheap PC, I'm sorry, uh, TV makers. In fact, we have one in, in my living room. Um, the reason we bought the TV is because it was literally half the price of the comparable whatever, you know, tier one brand uh, TV. But it, it, it's beautiful looking and it works well. And uh, these, you know, these PCs look fantastic. Yeah, I haven't seen them, but I, I'm very interested in seeing those because a lot, a lot of people were really raving over those at, at um, CES yesterday. Yeah, so. I think that was a kind of a nice surprise. So, you know, the PC market is supposedly dying, but here we have another... Uh, <laughs> It's a surprise player. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. you know, another indication that maybe the PC market of the future 
is going to be very different from that one that used to be just Dell and Compaq and HP. You know, it's a, it's a different world uh, these days. And that's a bad thing. I mean, I, I felt like yeah. the newer vendors are the ones bringing more innovative and uh, more innovative designs and not afraid to try things that some of the established vendors are seemingly afraid to. I, I think to. that's so, actually what it requires. Yeah. 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 So I think it's good. Yep. I agree. All right, so I think we need to head back again. Uh, I haven't heard a voice in my head in a few minutes, but I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll throw caution to the, the wind and, and hope that it just works. <laughs> I'm confused. We'll find out. Brian Jacquet will explain all in just a moment. But first, let's talk a little bit about Audible.com. I love Audible. Paul loves Audible. 100,000 books in your library. Audible is uh, just fantastic for people who have uh, time to, you know, live but not time to read you know if you're in a commute if you're on the plane if you're at the gym i i spend a lot of audible time uh, on on the stairmaster it's just great times when you couldn't really hold a book but you can listen and the books come alive uh, paul's recommendation of the book he's listening to right now is called micro it's now it's a Michael Crichton novel. Now, I think you know Michael Crichton passed away some years ago. So uh, Michael did not, in fact, write this novel. It's, uh, it's uh, with Richard Preston. But uh, Paul says it's a fantastic kind of follow-up uh, to, uh, uh, well, the Crichton nature versus technology uh, meme that you probably remember from Jurassic Park. Um, it's about science run amok, says Paul. This time, pharmaceutical companies that are doing biological prospecting, finding and exploiting previously unknown microscopic forms of life, and guess what? Who knew? Something goes wrong. Some have said this book has too much of Crichton's co-author in it. I don't see that at all, says Paul. Crichton's gift is making the fant... Wait a minute, is Crichton still alive? Did I just say he was dead and he's not? I thought he passed on. <laughs> Uh, Crichton's gift is making the fantastic not just believable but plausible. When you read Micro, you believe this could happen. Chat room, is 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 Michael Crichton still alive? I'm I'm asking I'm asking the chat room. Anyway, uh, I'm not laughing at his choice. Uh, I, I'm sure it's a great book. In fact, I know people who read it who say they love it. But it's just one of a hundred thousand titles you can get for free. Not all a hundred thousand. You get to pick one for free by going to audible.com slash windows audible.com slash windows you'll be signing up for the uh, uh, book a month plan your first book is uh, f your first month is free your first book is free and uh, you can cancel at any time and it's yours to keep forever so it costs you nothing audible.com slash windows and yes the chat room is is confirming that that michael Crichton passed away four years ago so he so i don't think he i don't think he wrote this but anyway uh thank you chat room for for <laughs> <laughs> confirming that I'm not I'm not nuts uh, you know the worst thing in the world is to say somebody's dead when they're not you know that's terrible uh, we do miss Michael Crichton he was a great writer but you know the, the, the books go on it's a it's kind of magical I don't know exactly how that's happening uh, your pick uh, of the week Mike Mike Rowe M-I-C-R-O by Michael Crichton but there are a hundred thousand great titles to choose from do sign up for audible they play on all your eye devices your your laptop computer your Kindle if you have an audio enabled Kindle uh, I, what I do is I have the Audible app on here. My whole Audible library is on here. This is an iPhone, but it also works on the Android phone. I download the books I want, get on the plane, and I am listening, and I love it. Audible.com slash Windows. Try it free today. Brian Jaquette is an old friend. He's been, uh, how many year, How many CESs have you been to, uh, Brian? Oh, geez. I mean, probably. You know, there have been 47 of them, and oh, you've been to. All but one. Or Only something. about like eight then maybe. <laughs> okay. Eight or uh, nine. It's fun, uh, you know, but it's exhausting, especially when you're here representing a product and you've yeah. got to get the demos working. And I know you... Well, especially the timing timing of it as well, right? Where it's... Uh, this one, this year's a little bit later because it's right after right. the holidays. A little bit right. after the holidays, but... You spend the holidays getting ready. That's what <laughs> Apple always complained about, right? So a lot of, a lot, a lot of people complain about right. it. Right, right. <laughs> so uh, you're working with OnLive. Yep. Uh, I didn't really say it right. OnLive is a very interesting technology. It was announced at CES, I think, two or three years ago. Right. Uh, came out last year, roughly. Or has it, it been two came years? Out, no, it's been, it's, been, it's been two years. Uh, almost two years. It came out in uh, 
E3 2010. It lets you game, but you don't have to have a high-end gaming machine. You can use the That's little right. on live device, or you can use a smartphone or a tablet. Right. It's all done in the cloud. It's amazing, and yep. play high-end games. Plus, uh, it's affordable because you don't buy the games. I mean, a game these days is 60 bucks. Right. On live is how much a month? Well, it, it, it can be all a card. It's, it's actually free to create an account, and oh. actually, um, you can play virtually every game on our service. We have over 200 now. Uh, for free, uh, up to 30-minute demos. Oh, that's so great. you can just jump right in with your PC or Mac and play. Um, we so now, if you're concerned that maybe yeah. the, the bandwidth isn't yep. enough or whatever, yep. try it. Yep. And I'm sure that's why you guys do it. You get a chance to see that it works. Absolutely. And it really does. That's the most important thing is that, that you, you know, you're able to jump right into the service uh, basically in seconds, right. creating a free account. Uh, if you want, we have a, a subscription service it's called Playpack. It's nine ninety nine a month. Uh, it gives you access to over a hundred games, unlimited. And then you know the big AAA titles. You know the ones that all came out in November and December: Batman, Arkham City, Saints Row the Third. Really, you've got that big, kind of high those, end stuff. Those types of games as well. Wow. We sell those um, a la carte. You know, we sell because they're for, premium. Yeah, you know, forty five to sixty dollars or so. So it's like buying the game, except that you don't have to have right. a very high end PC to play it. Right. In right. fact, you've got an iPad running now. I swear, I saw Windows on that iPad a second yeah, it, ago. Yeah, you did a second ago. Absolutely. I mean, and, and so you know, one of the things that w we have. Um, We've been talking about is extending this gaming service to mobile platforms. Uh, Doesn't Android, have to just be games, iOS, but but the technology. Absolutely right. The technology that we've built, uh, the server side technology we've built, is very very well designed for delivering other types of services, oh, other types of applications. Gaming is is but one of those applications, and one of the announcements, um, a big announcement we we made uh, just yesterday was that. We are delivering what's called on live desktop, and that is, uh, to begin with, that is a free service uh, to gives you up to two gigabytes of storage to basically uh, access and upload your Word, Excel, PowerPoint documents. Can you show us? Because we've got a shot of the uh, screen there, and uh, uh, if just, you want, uh, to just so basically, I I'm going to be running. Uh, I'm going to be running an iPad with yes. an ARM processor, but on the, on the screen will be Windows Seven, Microsoft Office. I have yes. a keyboard. I have a mouse. I mean, how do I do that you stuff? Can, so th there's two things. Um, you can use, uh, there's, a, there's a stylus. Here we go. There's turn, a stylus. So uh, the monitor is to your right, so okay. you can just see what we're seeing. So uh, you're going to have to be like Ginger Rogers okay. and do right. it upside there. down and backwards. That, good luck. Is that good? Yeah, that looks okay, great. So this is your, this is your desktop. Uh, there will be a web service that allows you to easily update, uh, upload documents. Now, is this remote access or is this a web a desktop in the cloud? It's not my desktop in the cloud. It's remote access, but for, for easy manipulation of documents, uh, of basically uh, both manipulating as, as well as presenting. So, so I'll put a client on my computer at home. It's kind of like log me in or uh, uh, go to my PC. Yeah, okay. to a certain degree. Yeah. So, but but, but, but you're doing more on the server side. Well, we, we basically crunch it. We, we upload and we give you access to all those documents, uh, whether it be PowerPoint, Excel, uh, Word, Word documents. Um, you can use a Bluetooth keyboard to manipulate. You can use a stylus for entry. Uh, you, you basically now, um, and, and actually think of this as this being the first client. You know, iPad is the first client. You could have this running on your Mac. You could have this running on your TV. And you're doing online. Android. And you could have this running on Android as well. So, wow. uh, you know, the power of OnLive is is that we've got these clients now that run across right. the gamut from you know from the TV it's very down interesting. to. Yeah. It's not a pivot. It's a, an addition. You're still doing the gaming. Yes. But now you're saying, well, look, we figured out a way to do this uh, right. for games. Right. Why not do it for operating systems and applications as right. well? How right. interesting. Absolutely. So, I mean, it's um, it's definitely a. Uh, let me just pull up something here. And you, the touch works and everything. Mm -hmm. So it will be a download from uh, the iTunes App Store uh, January 12th, day after tomorrow. And later this week, exactly. And then uh, free and, and, and to download and, you know, you can create an account. Up to two gigabytes. Yeah, the website is desktop.onlive.com. It's, it's up uh, and running right now. Uh, so you can go in there and, and check out all the information. There's a video running that kind of gives you an idea of what we're doing. And then will eventually there be a paid service associated with there this? There is a paid service that's going to be coming out uh, that will give you more storage. It will be geared towards uh, also some enterprise uh, variations. And also, you know, look at this. The Office apps are, are, the, are the, first, the first piece of this, of this puzzle. There will be other applications that will be available. You know, we've shown uh, demos of very, very graphics and processor intensive applications running in the cloud 
whether it be you know an AutoCAD or, or you know Maya type of application. You know what's interesting is app, as Microsoft made a big deal, and I don't think they talked about. It. I'll have to ask uh, Paul and Mary Jo about Office apps on the iPad. You know, having special iPad apps. You scooped them. <laughs> you just, you said, well, forget that. Use the real Office on your iPad. That's right. That's right. Uh, and this is this is the the full the office. full full Office on the iPad and, and free. That's. And free, and I think that's the real key piece here. Is that that this is not a a slimmed down version. This is not a a an optimized version. Uh, is this what free forever, or is this a, eventually you're going to charge for this? Or how, do you know what the plan is? It's free. Uh, it's and, free for and, now. Uh, <laughs> Enjoy. There are, but uh, like I said, there are services. Right. Uh, we call them like a pro version. Uh, it gives you uh, optimized. Uh, it costs access. you something though, because I presume you have to license Office we for do. every user. Yeah, right? standard standard licenses. Yeah. yeah. So uh, at some point, I don't yeah. think this will stay free, but uh, for yeah. now, take advantage of it. Yeah. It's a free app. Uh, you can find out more at desktop.onlive.com. And, of course, onlive.com uh, game service is also uh, online. And uh, Yeah, you know, one of the things we launched, just, just not to pivot again here, but, but <laughs> one of the things we launched at, uh, you know, in early December was access on your tablet for gaming. And we actually have a wireless controller out now, and so you can so play your cool. favorite games. Uh, wow. Wirelessly, you know, using a controller or through touch controls as well, wow. and so it's Could available I... right now on Android, and it's coming to other uh, other tablets. I'm going to give you a crazy question, okay. and you can uh, <laughs> if you don't know the answer. But when it comes on the uh, Mac, would I be able to use AirPlay to have the game on my iPad, but then have it put it up on the big screen TV? Similarly, DLNA on an Android well, phone, putting it on the. Big that's screen. what all the gamers are asking right now. They're saying, "Well, wait a minute. So if you're doing apps, what could you sideload other types of apps?" Yeah. And, and, Clearly, there is opportunity. We have not uh, made any specific announcements other than what, what you see here today. The sky's uh, the limit on this. But, yeah, and I who, think that's who, the key piece is who, that who is lots on, to do. Who, is, who started on live? Is it Steve, is it Steve Perlman? Perlman? It yeah. is Steve Perlman. Steve Perlman. So uh, Steve, of course, very well-known uh, uh, entrepreneur who's done some really amazing and interesting Web TV. Web TV. He sold it to Microsoft, was living in his, you know, Tahoe mansion <laughs> and said you know this all this cable stuff sucks came up with moxie right, he, right. yeah and uh, and now and now he's doing it on live this is a very smart guy very he's a very smart guy, guy. And, and and this is uh, I think uh, you know what we said all along is is that the the IP that we put into this on the server side and, and everything that goes into basically delivering instantaneous access to games and also yeah. you know having a controller going back and forth right the latency and the you know the the there's the a lot a of, lot going in there so you can do stuff. a lot with that technology well and it's funny cuz i didn't even i'm stupid steve's thinking a mile ahead I, I thought oh games but of course you could do anything on this yep. this is very interesting yep. brian great to see you great to if see people you people want to try the desktop you can go to uh, desk is it desktop.onlive.com yeah and uh, try it right now. The app will be available on the uh, iTunes uh, App Store in a couple of days later yep. this week. And, of course, on live.com for yep. the gaming as well. It's great to see you, Brian. Thanks Thank for you. joining us. Let's go back to Mary Jo and Paul as we continue with Windows Weekly live from CES 2012. Okay. I guess we're back. So we only have a few minutes. I guess we'll uh, do our picks, and then Leo can wrap up the show from Las Vegas. Um, I would like to point out that, yes, Michael Crichton is dead, but <laughs> that book was uh, <laughs> that book was uh, partially finished by him, so somebody finished it uh, for him. Uh, my tip of the week is about consolidating multiple email accounts, and because we don't really have a lot of time, this, is a, this could be a long, long discussion. I did post an article to the Supersite for Windows today about my own uh, move toward Hotmail and uh, exchange for personal and uh, work-related email, and I linked to in that article uh, are a series of articles I wrote last summer about email consolidation because there are different ways you can do it up on the server by collecting mail from a central account or by forwarding mail to a central account you could um, consolidate using an email application both in Windows or on the Windows phone or whatever so all that stuff is available up on the web and rather than try to rehash it quickly here um, I would just direct people in that direction uh, my software pick of the week, and this was kind of a tough one because actually there's a lot of new software this week. I, I had to make a separate list for my app picks because there's a bunch of stuff coming down the pike. Um, but it's an application called Pano for Windows Phone. Uh, it's a classic photo uh, panorama application that appeared first on iOS and I believe on Android. And they've released a version for Windows Phone. And it, it does exactly what it sounds like it does, which allows you to take a bunch of pictures side by side and then create a single seamless 
uh, panoramic photo right on your phone. And uh, it's a fun uh, app for that. I believe it costs a dollar ninety nine, possibly two ninety nine. I didn't write the price down, unfortunately, but uh, it's a great app. And if you want to make panoramas on the go and then share them to Facebook or whatever, uh, right from the phone, this is a great way to do that. And uh, Mary Jo, yes. So enterprise pick of the week is going to be um, Office three sixty five, the K plan. The K plan is the kiosk worker plan, which is the low end of of the Office sixty three sixty five. Uh, product family. And the reason I'm highlighting it this week is um, Microsoft's going to be adding three new uh, sets of capabilities to the K plan that are pretty interesting to business users. Um, one of them is they're adding Exchange Active Sync support for mobile devices to it. And right now you only have the POP uh, connectivity with the K plan. So this, this is something I think a lot of uh, businesses will be interested in. Um, since EAS, Exchange Active Sync, is, is quite prevalent on other devices. Um, there's also going to be doubled email storage um, up from 500 megs to a gigabyte. And then Exchange Online Archiving also will be available for people who have the K plan. Um, so the catch is, you figured there had to be a catch. Um, K plan right now costs either $2 per user per month or $4 per user per month, depending if you're using Exchange Online only or if you're using all uh, Office 365. Um, if you want to add these three new features, um, which I hear are probably going to be available as of March 2012, you're going to have to pay an extra $3.50 per user per month. So that's uh, the enterprise tip of the week. Um, and the code name pick of the week, I kind of dug into the archives for this one, but I thought it was fitting given a uh, consumer electronics show this week. Um, so the code name pick of the week is Lakeview. And Lakeview, um, some people may know, was the code name for Silverlight for Xbox. It was not the original code name for Silverlight for Xbox. Um, I actually don't know what the very first code name for that was, but um, at one point that code name was Greenlight, and then it became Lakeview. Um, and the reason it's important this week is, you know, Microsoft showed at CES uh, a lot of the new and coming Xbox Live TV services. And they were built on top of Silverlight for Xbox, even though Microsoft never wants to say that and never talks about that. So that's Lakeview on your Xbox, if you, if you were wondering what's enabling all that TV goodness. Um, and I wanted to throw in one, one more bonus codename pick of the week because uh, I have, we have, I should say, um, listeners of Windows Weekly in Montana. And after last week where we talked about my home craft brewing escapades, <laughs> um, I got a suggestion from one of our Montana listeners who said, I should name my next batch of code uh, of home brew by code name Billings. So that it is. MJF Homebrew 2 will be Billings. Thanks. Oh, what a rip. What That's about Boston? <laughs> Sorry, that's going to have to be another one, not not this one. <laughs> oh, well. Maybe and Dedham, D for Dedham. Dedham is not on the list, Paul. <laughs> Although Fine. it could be added for a fee. <laughs> we'll talk. Yeah, so that's it. That's what on our picks, I think. All right, so my understanding is we need to hand this back to Leo so he can wrap things up from Las Vegas. Thank you, Paul. And we are wrapping it up for Windows Weekly from CES 2012. Uh, I thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back at our regular time on Thursday next week, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern on twit.tv. Uh, do stay tuned, though. Lots more coverage live from uh, CES, and I think lots more Microsoft coverage when we uh, talk about things like Ultrabooks, Windows 8, Xbox, Windows Phone. In many ways, this is the most Microsoft-ish CES in, uh, in years. Uh, Leo Laporte for Paul and uh, Mary Jo, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Windows Weekly.